everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly, and in today's video we are going to pick up where we left off following on the Spirit Wave setup. We're doing the Setup Wizard Guide. Um, if you haven't watched the first video, please go back and do so. But in the previous segment, we left off with our main rotor um, uninstalled from the machine, so we got all of our base set up, our neutral. Um, we leveled the swash plate using our leveling tool. Um, and up until a certain point, we're in that progression in the setup wizard. So as you can see here on my model, I've went ahead and reassembled the main rotor, got it on. Um, I've got all my link rods and stuff set for the manufacturer's uh, specifications. As stated previously, I have already set up my machine, so everything should be um, pretty close to where it needs to be on my end. Um, so let's jump back into the setup wizard. And a quick note, uh, you guys at this time are going to need to go ahead and provide a pitch gauge of some sort. Um, in my particular instance, we're going to be using the Steam digital pitch gauge. Um, I picked this up off of uh, Heli Direct. It's a really great one. Uh, some of you out there use the uh, RC Logger, the Align, so forth and so on. Okay. Um, but let's go ahead and um, let me make sure that I am back where we need to be on the setup wizard. And we'll scroll back over here to where we left off. And we were just about to do our positive and negative pitch range, but we're also going to want to set up our um, our zero degrees as well. So the menu that I'm going to use to get my um, zero degrees. So we left off, guys, in this menu where it's going to have us actually um, adjust our collective pitch range, right? But we want to check to make sure we have our, our um, center first. So you could put your collective stick at center if need be. Um, but for mine, since we went ahead and 90 would our servos and everything, I'm going to go back to menus real quick. So just go ahead and do that by swiping. Um, right here is where I know, looking over at the model, that we've got our 90 degree on our servos. Our swash plate is level. We're going to find out if it's in the center of travel. And then we're also going to um, make sure that we have zero degrees of pitch. Now, the way, first thing you're going to want to look at before you go adjusting things is look at your mixing base arms. Um, indicated here they they should also be at a, at a flat plane like a 90 degree they shouldn't be up or down now if for any reason they are out of alignment there um, the only adjustments we can make are the three um, turn turnable links turnbuckle links if you have them that go from your servo to swash do not mess with your servo centering at all whatsoever just simply adjust these links now if you guys remember we made sure with digital calipers that all of our links were exactly the same length to get us our level swash plate, right? So as long as you adjust each link exactly the same amount, you don't have to go back through and re-level your swash. So if you're going to go two turns out on one, do it on all of them. This will allow you to raise or lower the swash plate in accordance with your, um, your mixing base here, your mixing arms, and get everything flush at 90 there. Moving forward from there, we're then going to move up to our blade grips. Okay, we want to make sure that those are at a zero degree of pitch. Um, I'm going to try my best, guys, to kind of get this captured um, on camera the best that we can. Um, of course, first thing, first tip that I'm going to give you is make sure that you zero your pitch gauge appropriately. Don't just throw it down on a desk or, or on a glass table or anything because that may not necessarily be at a perfectly pitched angle um, via the geometry of the main shaft and everything, okay? So um, the best spot to do it that I have found in all of my experiences is going to be um, right off the top of the motor. If you're running an electric model, right off the top of the motor is going to be your flattest surface that you have access to. Um, you, some people do it right off the tip of the, the main block, the, the main hub right up here. Um, I found the motor to be the most reliable source. If you're using a nitro, find a different level surface on there. Um, some people, based on your make and model, you can set it right between frames. Anywhere that you can get the best zero degree readout in correspondence to the main shaft of the helicopter. Okay, so that's important. So I'm going to go ahead and center this and get it installed. And let's go ahead and make sure we have zero degrees of fit. Okay, guys, so as you can see here um, on my pitch gauge, I've got sitting right up here. I went ahead and leveled it out with the top of my motor to zero out the pitch gauge, and I've installed it into one of my main grips. Um, as you can see on the radio, um, it sometimes helps if you know you can kind of move forward back to your your collective range step here, and then if you want, you can move right back, and you should hear it recenter your servos. 
Now, it's okay if your um, digital pitch gauge kind of teeter-totters a bit between like a 0 and a, and a 0 0.1 and a 0 0.2. Um, it just does that. Guys, it's really hard to get this thing to be like a dead solid just 0, even sometimes just talking vibrations. Um, so as long as you got it at 0, you know, a 0 0.1 or so off, then you should be totally fine. So in this particular menu, like we talked about, this is where we centered everything. And... Because of this, this is also where we're going to want our zero degrees of collective pitch. So you're going to want to check both blades, but for sake of saving video purpose um, length and time here, I'm just going to show you with the one. If this um, digital pitch gauge is not reading at a zero, you'll want to adjust the corresponding link, either in or out, depending on um, which direction you need to travel until you get a zero. Spin yourself over to the other blade, repeat the same step. This should also help eliminate blade tracking issues as well. Um, if you have the turn, buck, turn buckle features like a lot of models do now, it's really nice. You can just easily fine tune it, okay? So get yourself at a zero here. Again, make sure that your mixing base um, and everything was also zeroed out or level. And we are ready to go ahead and proceed forward, okay? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to set up. Well, let's jump right back over here in our setup wizard and go over to our maximum collective pitch range, okay? Now, for this menu, it's going to unlock the throttle. We now have access to it, okay? At center, we should be at zero degrees. Um, now, what we're going to want to do is just go ahead and press your collective stick all the way up to the very, very top amount, okay? And let's go ahead and see what kind of a positive range we have. I'm sitting at about an 8, 8.9, um, just shy of 9 degrees. I'm going to be flying uh, typically around 12, 12 and a half. So let's go 12.5. So we're going to go ahead and activate the menu. We'll pull up our, our dials here. And I'm going to just go ahead and increase and or decrease this number, okay, as needed until we get to the desired amount. Let me see where I'm at. It's kind of hard for me to see on both sides here. That gets me at about a 10.4. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep moving. Let's go up to 140. Let me see where that gets me here. And that's going to give me a 12.1. So I want to go just a little bit more, you guys. Let's try 145. Okay. And it's really nice you can make these micro adjustments. And that gets me right where I want to be. A 12.6, 12.5. And call me strange, but I like it because it's kind of an, uh, you know, an odd number, you know, 145, that gives me a five degree increments up or down. I don't know. I just kind of like to be in the middle. So that's going to give me my 12.5, um, even if it's kind of floating and teeter tottering there. Now, don't panic. What a lot of people might do at this point is you might come over here. Let's check what my full negative range is because it's only given me one option to select, right? And I'm at 11.5. So I'm like one full degree off. Do not panic over this, okay? Let's go back and get to about center. I'm going to lock us in at 145 on my model. Okay, I feel happy with that. And let's go ahead. I'm going to scroll over now, and we have another menu. Now, on this one, it's going to let us make sure that the maximum and minimum collective pitch is equal. So this is almost like a sub-trim for your overall mixing on your high and your low ranges of pitch. Now, in our particular case, I'm going to go ahead and let's travel our stick um, all the way up to full real quick, and let's just check it from this location. I should be at about 12, 12.5, and I am, and I'm happy with that. So I know that my top end does not need to be adjusted, but that low end, uh, which we just discovered, actually could use a little bit of a boost, okay? So what I'm going to do is we'll open up the low end here. And we want to uh, increase the negative amount, okay? So let's see. If we're at a 11.4, 11.5, somewhere around there. Let's see what happens if we go into the negative a little bit. Let's give it 15, okay? We went about 15. Oop, that's 10. So actually, we are going in the wrong direction. Forgive me on that, guys. Let's go back over here. And let's go positive 15. Ooh, 12.8. Now, like I said, I like to stay in the realm of, of specific numbers. So let's back it down by 5. 
and let's see what a 10% increase will do. Oop, there it is right there. So that's about a 12.6, 12.7. Um, if I wanted it to be exact on the money, let's try coming down by two more points and let's get it at 8%. Let's see what an 8% buff does. 2.4 to 2.5. And I know on my last one, I was kind of teetering 12.5 and 12.6. So watch, I bet if I go right here at a 9, let's see where that lands me. And it's the same result. So I'm actually going to go ahead and keep this right at 10%. Okay. So let's check this one more time here. I'm going to go ahead and move all the way up to full positive. 12.4, 12.5. I really like that result. Let's go ahead and go full negative. And we're getting about a 12.4, kind of fluctuating to a 12.3. So... Guys, that's that's spot on. I mean, that's as good as good can get. I mean, the gyroscopes and everything in these machines really do a lot of the work, so you don't have to spend 17 hours getting this exact exact. I like to round up to even whole numbers or odd numbers. Obviously, those are the only two options you could do is even or odd, but I think you kind of get my point in increments, right, like fives, tens, um, so forth and so on. So we've got this step done here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. Let's put my collective back down. And... We are all set for this, so let's move over. Now, this one's going to give maximum cyclic deflection. Um, for this particular step here, let's see. Sorry about that, guys. My kitty cat was driving me nuts. Um, so for this one here, now that we have established our full um, positive and negative range, we know how what the extent of our servos are going to be. So let me go ahead and get a different angle on the camera, and we will do this step. All right, guys. So jumping into this particular step here, what we're going to want to do is check the numbers that we have assigned here um, for our overall cyclic deflection as it labels. Okay, so this is basically our overall throw. The easiest way to do this um, is I'm going to take my cyclic stick. And I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna actually just move it into each corner at its furthest, kind of in a circle, but it kind of makes a square. And what we're checking for right now is we're gonna remain at center stick, so um, as close to zero as you guys can find, okay? And then just go ahead and go to each corner, and I don't hear any buzzing. I don't hear any interacting. That means my servos aren't maxing out, the balls aren't interacting with the case, the link rods aren't rubbing together, any, whatever the case may be, okay? Now, we're going to also want to move to full positive, collective, and do your corner touch again. Boom, all my corners. No buzzing, no binding. Let's go full negative. Boom, boom, boom. No buzzing and no binding. So... We know that at 100% right there where it's defaulted at, I believe it's defaulted there anyways, um, I'm not getting any buzzing or binding. Now what you guys can do to get the maximum amount of travel that you want, um, you can use the uh, recommended amount here where it says about 9 to 11, um, which would mean is you would just want to have your pitch gauge on and you can have your blades parallel or perpendicular, whichever reading you want. Um, and then you just go ahead and give it that full deflection, and then you can actually increase or decrease this number to meet the value that you want. Um, what I found works the best is I'll, I'll take it all the way up to full collective, and I'll do my corner touches, okay? And I'll, I'll go ahead and open up the menu here, and I'll increase or decrease this number up until it starts to bind. I want to find my absolute maximum travel movements. So when it starts to bind, I'll back it off by like five or 10 points. And that usually gets me in a pretty good sweet spot. Okay. So a um, hundred is actually where I ended up on this machine. Um, as I said before, I have preset this up. Okay. So this step's really easy to do guys. Um, either do it based off the pitch gauge if you wish, or just find that maximum throw, find your buzzing amount, back it off. I'd say about five points. 10 points if you want to be super safe. Um, and then we can go ahead from there. We're complete with this menu. Let's go back down with my pitch. And I'm going to swipe right over. Now this one wants you to put the blades parallel with the boom. And in this case, I'm using the steam gauge, right? So I don't have to have my main rotors on. Um, but what it's asking for on this one is to change this value 
until we get a six degree uh, measured with the pitch gauge. Okay, so same thing. I would go ahead and activate the menu, and I'm at 100% now, and I'm looking for six degrees. Okay, and I'm at a 5.6, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead, let's increase this by five points. Okay, let's see what that gives me. Uh, 5.9, 5.8. I'm getting that little bit of a teeter, guys. And like I said, I like to keep all mine as even as possible. So let's just for fun, let's let's see what happens if we go to 110. And let's see if that uh, shoots it way over or if we're on the money. 6.1, okay, I like that. I'm actually going to leave it right there at 110. Um, gets me to that six degree measurement, okay? So uh, we'll go ahead, guys, once you get that complete. Let's swipe on over. And now this one's going to get us into the rudder setup parameters. Let me go ahead and reposition, and we'll follow up with the tail on the next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you comment and subscribe. Make sure you follow along with the rest of this series so you guys can ride the wave with me. As always, my friends, remember, if Freddie can fly, so can you.